Hall, who arrives in record stores Tuesday with his debut solo effort, Euphoria, Euphoria Morning. Our Chris Connolly sat down with Cornell recently and found that while he may not be totally euphoric, some of the old grunge era angst appears to have abated. People were very impressed with the anti-acrimony uh, of your breakup, that everyone seemed to do it in a, in, a, in a nice way. Well, it was really just a matter of time. I mean, we'd been a band for a really long time, and we also kind of, in a sense, sculpted our career and our history in a way that seemed well, kind of perfect. Like, we didn't really make any mistakes. I guess the best part about being a solo artist is that if you write something that you can't play or your buddy can't play, you can just go find a guy. To help flesh out his sonic whims, Cornell didn't just go find a guy, he found a woman too. He wound up hammering out the new disc with old friends and former tour mates, Alan Johannes and Natasha Schneider of the LA band 11. When the Soundgarden tour was over this last time, they invited me to spend some time with them and, and they're brilliant musicians, so it was just, you know, sliding into a creative situation where there was no hitches, really. Do you feel confident that from the standpoint of your voice and from the sonic textures on this mm -hmm. record, you can translate that in a live context with just the guys you're bringing out? Yeah, it's actually, uh, we're in the middle of doing that right now, and it's going amazingly well. One thing, though, that you've alluded to was a wave goodbye, which mm -hmm. refers to Jeff Buckley's death. So you we would call and talk to each other about the things we had in common, which was like songwriting, you know, performing, dealing with the, the record industry and, and things we dislike about it and often kind of complaining to each other because, you know, nobody wants to hear some young, successful rock guy complain about anything, so you gotta go find another one. Now, Flutter Girl is left over from an early Soundgarden demo, is that right? And then um, everything else is pretty much... Actually, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a demo, it was, uh, it was just a fun thing I did for uh, Cameron Crowe when I was on the movie set of singles. There was a fictitious solo tape that was Matt Dillon's character that made this solo four-track tape. And there was a bunch of titles by uh, Jeff Amont from uh, Pearl Jam. And so I wrote the songs and recorded them on four track with, based on those titles and gave them to him. Like the movie, Soundgarden spent much of its career steeped in the Seattle music scene's exquisite alienation. But that's a mood not much on Cornell's mind these days. I like to laugh at that sometimes and just think, you know, what was the big drama? Reacting and responding to life this, in that way all the time, eventually you, you start to think, well, I've done this, haven't I? And you don't want to do it anymore. So would you say you're happier now than you were five, ten years ago? I can't remember five, ten years ago. <laughs> so I'll just say yes. I'm sure I am. Chris Cornell, he is currently on a mini tour of the U.S. with a larger tour set to kick off November 10th in Atlanta.